we're done with that last one on practice number one for the molar mass. So practice number one, question or problem number 10. So here is our uh, formula for this compound. We're going to name this compound. Uh, this is one that we can name. And the reason I know that we can name it is because we're going to look at this first, this first element. There's a lot of in there. So this is polyatomic on both ends. So we're going to find out what the name of this polyatomic ion is and what the name of this one is right here. Now, the easiest way to know is we, we know that this is polyatomic because my first element is a nonmetal. And I have more than two here. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and look at this polyatomic ion and this one. So how do we figure it out? Well, it's pretty simple, uh, really. All we have to do is go to our uh, polyatomic ion sheet. Again, remember that's at the very end of our packet, and you might have done something a little bit different. So here's it is at the end. And we're going to look for NH4, which is right here. So it's ammonium. And then we're going to look for, let me just get in here, C2H3O2, acetate. So when we have polyatomic ions at the beginning and at the end, we use it just like a type 1 nomenclature. We're just going to name it. But we don't have to change the ending to I. That's the nicest thing about this. So we're going to go back here. And this one right here is going to be ammonium and then acetate. So we're going to write it in here as uh, ammonium, and then it's acetate. So there's our name, <coughs> ammonium and acetate. Pretty long formula, okay? which is going to be great when we go ahead and figure out the molar mass. So we have to write all the elements that we have. So we have nitrogen. okay? We have hydrogen. We have carbon. We have more hydrogen, but we're going to keep all the hydrogens together. And we have oxygen. So I have one, two, three, four different elements. There's my four. So let's figure out how many we have of each one. So we have nitrogen. I look at all my nitrogens. There's no subscript right there, so that means that we have one. We go to hydrogen. I have four right here plus three right there, so that is going to be seven. Then we're going to go to carbon. Carbon, I have a subscript for two, so we only have two carbons. And then oxygen, I have a subscript of two here, so we're going to have two oxygens. Now we're going to multiply these by the molar mass or the weight of each one of these uh, elements. So the molar mass is equal to the weight in grams, but because we're doing this entire uh, molecule, Okay, right here of ammonium acetate, we have to figure out how you know how many grams does one mole. And remember, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So how much does that whole thing weigh? So we can weigh it out. And the reason we're going to use moles instead of just weighing out one molecule, one molecule weighs so little bit we can't we don't have a scale that can work good enough. But we can figure out how much a mole weighs. Okay, so that's why we're doing molar mass. So we're going to go ahead and we got to find the, the weight of nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. You might already know them. Hopefully you do by now. But if you don't, we're going to go back to our packet. We're going to go back over here to the periodic table. Okay. And we're going to do nitrogen, which is 14. We're going to do hydrogen, that is 1. We're going to do carbon, that is 12. And oxygen, that is 16. Now let's see if we can remember all those. So nitrogen was, that's right, 14. Hydrogen was 1. Carbon was 12. And oxygen was, you're right, 16. So we're going to tally those all up. So that's going to equal, so 1 times 14 is 14. Oh, that was a tough one. Okay. 7 times 1 equals Seven, you got it. That's pretty easy ones. I don't even need a calculator on these ones. So two times 12 is you're just going to double up. 24, you got it. And then our last one, we have two times 16. 16 and 16 is 32. So we're going to go ahead and uh, figure out what our molar mass is by. So our molar mass is going to equal all of these 
right here, all of those added up together. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to tap these over just a little bit just to help us out. So we're going to add those up so we can get out our handy dandy calculator. Unless you can do it in your head, which is which is great, but sometimes my calculator up here doesn't quite work. So we're going to go ahead and put in the calculator. So we have 14 plus 7 plus 24 plus 32 equals 77. Now let's double check that again. 14 plus 7 plus 24 plus 32 equals 77. If I did it twice, it should probably be correct. Not can't guarantee everything. I make mistakes all the time like everybody else. So it's going to be 77 grams of ammonium acetate. Now we either can write the name or we can write the formula. Uh, since we already have it here, I can just go ahead and copy it, right? And then just paste it right there. So we know the molar mass of ammonium acetate is 77 grams. Highlight it. Once we highlight it, again, I like green. And there we go. There's our answer. We're all done. So that's it for uh, molar mass for practice sheet number one, problem number 10. As always, go Mohawks. Nelson out.